Hi guys, welcome back to YouTube channel Chemistry Life UGPG. Today we are going to talk about atomic structure CC1, GE1, Unit 1, Lecture 6. So this will be highly beneficial for BSc Chemistry students under CBCS syllabus. So I have a simple message for you guys. Please think for innovation, be creative, learn everywhere, anytime and help to learn others. So this is the syllabus for CC1 paper for BSc honor students and G1 paper for generic students. So today we are going to talk about Pauli's exclusion principle, Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity, Haber's principle and its limitations, electronic configuration of atoms, anomalous configuration of atoms, stability of half-field and full-field orbitals, a concept of exchange energy. So let's talk about Pauli's exclusion principle. So it says no two electron in an atom can have four quantum numbers identical. So that means the fourth quantum number will be obviously different. So for example for p orbital n equal to 2 let's say and l equal to 1. So m values means minus 1 0 and plus 1 and the fourth quantum number spin quantum number will be it can have a values either plus half for electron half or for electron 2 that will be minus half. So that's why the four, the four quantum numbers cannot be same for the both the electrons. So let's try some problem. So an electron in 3D orbital. What possible values of quantum numbers for n, l, m and m, s can it have? So for 3D orbital we know n equal to 3, l equal to 2. So m value will be minus 2, 0, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. And for spin quantum number value, ms will be plus half and minus half. For each value of m, that means for each electron, it will be different. So what cell or orbital are possible? in n equal to 4 energy level and how many orbitals are possible for this level so when l equal to when n equal to 4 so l can have 0 1 2 3 so l equal to 0 means s orbital l equal to 1 p orbital and l equal to 2 d orbital l equal to 3 f orbital so s orbital only one p orbital you have three types d orbital 5 and f orbital 7 so if you add all these so 7 plus 5 12 plus 3 15 plus 1 so 16 orbitals we can have so that means n square number of orbitals we can have the next is above's principle so in ground state of an atom the electrons are filled in different orbitals in the increasing order of their energies. So this is the definition. So the, in an atom the electrons are filled up in different orbitals in the increasing order of their energies. So the increasing order of their energies in various orbitals follows the, in this way 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s like, like that. So the orbital energies are governed by n plus rule. So energy is high if n plus l value is high. And if n plus l value is same, the orbital with high value of n principal quantum number has higher energy. So let's try some problems. So which orbital in the following pairs have higher in energy? 5p or 5d? So for 5p orbital n equal to 5, p orbital l equal to 1, so n plus l is 6. And 5d orbital n equal to 5, d equal or d orbital l equal to 2. So n plus l equal to 7. So obviously 5d is higher in energy. Similarly let's try another one, 4s and 3d. So 4s orbital n equal to 4, s equal, for s orbital l equal to 0. So n plus l equal to 4. And for 3d orbital n equal to 3. And for d orbital l value is 2. So n plus l value is 5. So obviously 5 is higher. So 3d orbital is higher in energy. Similarly you can try another problem. Order the orbitals according to increasing in energy. So 4d, 3p, 2s and 5s. 
so for d n equal to 4 and for d orbital l equal to 2 so n plus l equal to 6 and for 3p n equal to 3 and p orbital l equal to 1 so n plus l equal to 4 and for 2p orbital n equal to 2 and p orbital l equal to 1 so n plus l equal to 3 and for 5s n equal to 5 and l equal to s equal for s orbital l equal to 0 so n plus l is 5 so obviously 4d is higher energy then 5s then 3p then 2p so the order is 2p greater than 3p greater than 5s sorry less than 5s less than 4d so 4d having higher in energy so similarly you can try the other one so i have solved for you next is limitations of abbas principle the abbas principle cannot be applied to predict electronic configuration of atoms on ionization although n-1d and ns subcell lie fairly close to each other yet the former is slightly higher in energy in sixth period 4f and 5d orbitals are exceptionally close in energy and when in an ion is to be formed the abbas principle does not tell which electron are to be removed the next is Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity so what is the definition of Hund's rule no pairing of electron takes place unless each orbital gets half filled so let's say the electronic configuration of nitrogen so 1s2 2s2 2p3 okay so this 2p3 we know 2p orbital is of three types 2px 2py and 2pz so we can put these three electrons either in this way one electron in each orbital or two in one and another one or one here and in the last 2pz orbital or two electron so we can according to Hund's rule we cannot go for pairing for this structure or for this structure okay so only the first structure will be correct because no pairing of electron will be taking place until each orbital gets half filled so the first structure will be the right one similarly oxygen 8 so electron configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p4 so we know 2p orbital is three types 2px 2py and 2pz so the first electron will go here then second electron will go here and next electron will go here so now it gets half filled each one so the fourth electron will go for pairing so that will go to the 2px orbital similarly the carbon 6 so electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p2 so we have to write like this one electron here and one electron here and we cannot put the both the electrons in one orbital okay so that we cannot do according to Hund's rule So according to Abbas, following the Abbas principle, the electronic configuration of atoms have been written. So hydrogen has one electron, so that is 1s1. Helium, two electron, 1s2. Then boron, five electron, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Similarly, carbon, six electron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Nitrogen, seven electron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Oxygen, eight electron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Similarly, argon 18, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Similarly, titanium 22, argon 18, 3d2, 4s2. So, 20 plus 2, 22. Similarly, vanadium, argon 18, 3d3, 4s2. Similarly, we can write also for chromium 24, argon 18, 3d4, 4s2. But we cannot write this. This is wrong. So the correct one is argon 18 3d5 4s1 because this is half filled structure and it is more stable this is the anomaly in uh, atomic configuration or electronic configuration similarly nickel 28 argon 18 3d8 4s2 similarly we can write also for copper 29 argon 18 3d9 4s2 but this is wrong so it is the correct one is argon 18 3d10 4s1 so here you have fulfilled orbital 3d10 Similarly for zinc 30, argon 18, 3d10, 4s2. So the anomalies in case of chromium 24 and copper 29 are attributed to the fact that exactly half filled and full filled orbitals like d5 and d10 electrons are there 
have lower in energy and hence possess extra stability. Then let's talk about the stability of half-filled and full-filled orbitals, the concept of exchange energy. So by advanced mathematical calculation, it is found that if an if on exchanging the position in space of two electrons with parallel spins, there is no change in electronic arrangement. So it would lead to decrease in energy, such a pair of electrons is called exchange pair. So the larger the number of exchange pairs of electrons, the greater would be decrease of energy. The energy decrease per exchange pair of electrons is termed as exchange energy. And this exchange energy carries a negative sign. So here is the example. So for D1 to D5 configuration. So here this is half filled D5 configuration. So the number of exchange pairs for electrons in these arrangements are in D1 case 0, D2 case 1, D3 case 3, D4 case 6 and D5 case 10. So hence the exchange energy associated with arrangements would be 0, minus E, minus 3, minus 6 E and minus 10 E. So in D5 configuration, the maximum exchange energy is minus 10e and is the most stable configuration in which the five degenerate orbitals are exactly half filled. Similarly, another concept pairing energy, P, the energy required for placing two electrons together in the same orbital, that is for pairing of electrons, is called pairing energy, P, and it has a positive sign. And the overall stability of the system is decided by the sum of exchange energy and pairing energy. So here is one example, P4 configuration, P5 configuration and P6 configuration, 1, 2 and 3. So as a consequence of exchange energy and pairing energy, the net energy change for electronic arrangements 1 and 2 and 3 are minus 3E plus P, minus 4E plus 2P and minus 6E plus 3P. So experimental it is found that the arrangement 3 is more stable than 1 and 2. So this shows that the most there must be some other stabilizing factor in favor of arrangement 3. So that is symmetrical distribution of charge. So similarly in case of chromium 24, the first configuration which is wrong that is 4s2 3d4 and second configuration B 4s1 3d5. So your energy is minus 10e plus p. And here energy is minus 15 e plus delta e. So that is called the promotional energy. So here this uh, B, B case is found to be more stable. Similarly in copper 29, the A case, the configuration is 4s to 3d9. So energy is found to be minus 25 e plus 5 p. And here in second case 4s1 3d10 case. So here energy is minus 25p plus 5p plus delta i. So in conclusion it is found that in both the cases the arrangement B is found to be more stable experimentally also. So here are some variation of uh, an orbital energy with atomic number. So it will follow the above principle. So chromium 24 and copper 29. So actual configuration is 3d5 for s1, 3d10 for s1. And in case of 5D series, Platinum 78 and Gold 79. So actually it's 4A14, 5D9, 6S1, 4A14, 5D10, 6S1. So that means half filled and completely filled orbitals are more stable. So please subscribe to our channel Chemistry Live UGPG. So this is also available in the website chemistrylifeugpg.com. So this is the channel Foundation Chemistry AB for 11th and 12th students. So this is a simple step towards e-learning making life better. Thank you all for learning.